Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to episode five of Hunt Killers Class of 98. Um, we have made it through four episodes so far. So, if my math is correct, out of five, right? So, there you mm -hmm. go. Uh, I have Strange Tangent, as always, and joined by my amazing and lovely wife, Mrs. Strange, aka Red Panda. There you go. Uh, which I know you all love her more than me anyway, so I completely understand, okay? Uh, and I don't blame you at all. So, spoiler warning, we're going to go over episodes one through four, just very quick recap to say where we're at. Uh, with things, and then uh, we'll dive into, you know, the stuff for episode five. Uh, and then uh, if you did miss anything with episodes one through four, don't worry. I will make sure. Oh, let me look at the camera here. Sit up up somewhere in that corner is going to be a little thing. Click it. It'll take you to the, you know, the playlist. You can watch through all the other previous episodes, all right? Uh, and while we're at it, talking about YouTube, don't forget, like, subscribe, all right? Follow us over on Twitch if you want to join us live next time. Uh, we have a lot of fun. You all get to help us solve the case right there in the moment, all right? Or if you just want to come hang out, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, feel free to join in. Uh, all right. Uh, so where are we at, uh, I think, with our case, right? We've eliminated Eliminate. everyone except for four? Yeah, we have... we've eliminated five. We have four left. Okay, so there we go. Out the real deal. <laughs> all right. So, excited. Um, so far, we've eliminated... Uh, season, or episode of box one was uh, Aurora, the cousin. Um, she was at the gym. Or okay. Uh, yeah, gym, kind of cleaning up. Uh, we had Sarah, his wife. She was at home with the daughter, and she'd ordered some food, so a receipt okay. to prove her innocent. Um, Arthur was uh, box three, I think. He was a little trickier. He was the one that posted the video also at the school. That's right, we yeah. Were, we weren't as convinced on that alibi, but it seems like it was not enough time for him to get from the school to where Charlie died. Right. And then the last episode, a nice twist, we ended up with two people eliminated, which was kind of cool. So that oh, was yeah. a fun surprise. So yeah, one absolutely. of those was the veterinarian, Susan. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a surprise because she had the frustrations with him regarding the animals that were being overdosed at her clinic. Yeah, so. and her, where the clinic was very close to um, where Charles was found. So, yeah. Uh, she, yeah, that was definitely a surprise. She was on the phone with her lawyer. So we, yeah. found, we called Kelly and Kelly last time. <laughs> um, so that was really fun. Um, it would rule her out. And then. We also rolled out Antonio, who was, it seems like friends at some point with Charlie. I can't quite tell if they right. were friends at the very end, but um, seemed to have had a business of some type, most likely of dealing illicit substances together. Yeah, um, I think, so yeah, we were seeing that with the history. pharmacy list mm -hmm. and, yep. and all of that stuff as yep. well. But he was clearly on a video camera at uh, Nick's parents' Taverna, which is where they were all going to meet at 10. Okay. He was on a uh it surveillance image at like 9 30 something so that's like, right there's no way he could have been there yep. yeah so and that okay. caps everyone so far so now we've got ex-girlfriend we've got nita which is like best friend slash college friend she went to college with them too okay um, so we have nita which is mm -hmm. that the ex-girlfriend no nita's the college like she she's like the nerdier one that like hung out with them in high school oh that's right that's she's right journalist no she, nita's the one that does not like uh michelle gray correct major okay Mendetta. yeah that's right that's right and i think it's because she's a journalist she has to be the top dog but right but yeah. yeah she's got to be the one that solves it not okay michelle kind of so thing. we have nita who else do we have and then robin would be the ex-girlfriend okay we have robin Farmer. right so okay. she stayed local and is apparently very against drugs for the farmers mm -hmm. against drugs thing from last week oh yep that's right <laughs> for, for fad yeah her bad group um and then gavin who's a right. surgeon plastic surgeon out in la somewhere um okay. who might have an issue um maybe some jealousy or some some control issues because he had a news article last time we looked at that he did a cosmetic surgery on a guy who was dating his ex-wife and he gave him massive lips on top mm. of the 10 he wanted that's right <laughs> So slight pettiness slash slight vindictiveness there. Right. Um, a little bit. And then last but not least, we have Nick Nick Matsukas, whose parents own the Taverna. Um, but one reason he's still in the running right now is his mom said that he was there the whole time helping her get ready. Then she's clearly also admitted, oh, no, he showed up after Gavin. Right. So there's a huge timeline debacle with her right now that's just not matching up. 
So, uh, Nick, we definitely saw on a video camera around 10 something, so we would have had plenty of time to do yeah, murder. So, no, a- absolutely. That's the four we're looking at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's where we're at. Uh, that's where we're going, is we got the four left. We'll be eliminating one more suspect uh, this episode. Uh, more than likely. I mean, we, yeah. we'll, we'll read the, the, if anything goes according to history with these, <laughs> uh, it'll, we'll eliminate one more suspect this episode. And then next episode, the final episode, episode six, which will be, um, as of right now is planned for July 7th. Okay. So, uh, Thursday, July 7th plan to be here for the final episode. Uh, that will be, we'll be looking at three sus, the Final three suspects, more than likely, and trying to decide who we really feel uh, killed Charles and be able to see and find out if we were able to, you know, put the right person behind bars, right? So, uh, well, we've got uh, we've got the box, so what we can do is we can get over there for that. Uh, Silent Moon, I hope you are doing fantastic. Hope you're enjoying your night. All right, there we go. So we do have that. We'll get over here to the evidence room. Oh, fanny pack, are you serious? <laughs> All right, yeah, there you go. What is the odds of that? That's absolutely hilarious. A family member may have been asking one of us if we had a fanny pack within the past. Yeah, year. that was, uh, yeah. So I, that is absolutely I did think that was pretty funny. We did get asked that a while back if we had a fanny pack, and we were like, no, we don't. And now we have a fanny pack. Now we have a fanny pack. Okay. Uh, so there you go. The gifts that keep on giving. Mm-hmm. Um, so all kinds of good stuff. Um, let's just go through it. Let's just make it funner. So a fanny pack. This actually isn't bad looking, considering. Okay. Not quite as bulky as they were back when we were younger. The 90s fanny packs were. Oh yeah, I mean they had like the yeah, <laughs> look at a piece of cardboard across the top inside of the top flap of it. We'll sneak and look into these more later because there's probably some hidden stuff in them. But it's like a CD, maybe like a CD, like like back then we would make each other like playlists. Yeah, and like mixed like CDs, like mix yeah, tapes or mixed CDs, yes. Yeah. Now, no, by the time we hit late '90s, it was mixed CDs. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I could rip my first year or like burn one quite in the like that time frame, but I think by yeah. the early two thousands I could. Yeah. Yeah. We got Michelle's opening letter, kind of filling us in on everything, and a little investigation file. All right. Still can't say how much we love how organized these are compared to other episodes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got some more Fan goodies here. Way. Let's see, we've got something between Gavin and Michelle. Oh, there you go. Uh, what is this? Nick also, or Nick owns a record store, so maybe he also sells CDs. No, does he? Yeah. I thought it was Antonio. Was it Antonio that owned the record store, or was it Nick? Because I thought it was. Is that the one that was next to where Charlie worked at? I can't. I think so. Maybe. I think it might have been Antonio. Was it? So I think Nick kind of worked with the with the, the LFOA people. Okay. He was the scientist, so I can't imagine a neuroscientist. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. For some reason, I, I think so maybe that it was Antonio. Because it seems like Nick is very overwhelmed from what we could gather last episode. Yeah. Like, very stressed out and was dealing with a bunch of neuroscience stuff and the LFOA, like, confidentiality, mm-hmm. non-disclosure stuff. Um, but I think there's just a lot of skeletons still open in that closet. Oh, yeah. No, Absolutely. <laughs> all good silent moon Sorry. i mean if you can tell like obviously out of the two of us of which one uh has the memory of a goldfish and which one has the memory of like being able to just lock everything down like fort knox um obviously i'm the one that's fort knox okay i mean obviously that's a hundred percent clear uh you know so <laughs> i i did spend about two hours earlier today refreshing myself for the first four episodes just because there's a lot of names and stuff it's just easier um so you were totally fine i just i feel bad i was just like i don't know if that's matching what i thought i knew in my head from a few hours ago but right either way yes i'm sure there's a cd store in town still for sure especially oh, back then um so it looks like something with michelle and gavin we'll have to get more into that it looks like some kind of an interview maybe i can't quite figure it out there's like some digital audit uh, type thing. Yep. so um, it looks like a uh it is, yeah, an interview of Gavin Nash in regards to the Charles yeah. McDonough case. So it looks like, uh, yeah, Michelle Gray talking with Nash and going back and he forth. He was very vague in his first interview, so that would make sense. Right. 
Oh, she's got some follow-up <laughs> interviews. This is going to be good. Well, you know what? Thank you, Silent Man. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm so glad that you love Red Panda, even though she's a goldfish. <laughs> I have my moments. All right. Uh, so we have Nick, Moore, and Robin. And, oh, it might be all four of our final contestants here. Let's see. Yep, and Sarah. Wait, no, Sarah. Sarah. She's not, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no. I'm confused now. All right. So we have three of our suspects, but not all four. So that's interesting. So Robin, Nick, Nita. So Sarah has an updated one? Yeah, but she's not a suspect anymore. Right. Who am I missing? Nick? I think we're missing. Oh, I think we're missing Gavin. Well, we have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have one from Gavin already. We do. We have yeah. one of everybody's already. Correct. So yeah. This is just more information. Mm -hmm. So I just wasn't expecting more from Sarah. Yeah, I think was this was called. What do they call it? Um, updated witness. Oh, statements. okay. Updated witness. Yeah. You know, so they can be more truthful or more. Oh my. Yeah. Oh my. Right. Interesting. So there's a uh, looks like a crayon drawing as well so we might have been right about the nita thing okay it might be nita or nick that's nick i'm a little that'll be interesting yeah happy face though someone's happy that someone's in the ground that's pretty bad, bad. well i mean i'm seeing mom mm -hmm. m and n right so, so mom maggie in person texting mom oh yeah <laughs> so is that nita or nick those were right. kind of our two suspicions because she had her in the phone and the person in the phone is n but right the fact that a child drew this has me slightly disturbed right so <laughs> happy faces sad faces <laughs> exactly wow that is that is interesting i'll say that much and then we have uh oh a little funeral oh that's kind of fancy isn't it uh -oh. oh gosh he's changed <laughs> <laughs> um and a tiki bar oh wait that's uh that's that bar in town I was telling you about last time. That's that a Nick, tiki Nick bar? was claiming he had been to. Yeah, he just. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe that'll rule him in or out. Maybe. Yeah, and very then possible. Reynolds Bus Lines Inc. Pretty legit little. Uh oh. There's always an history <laughs> to be found. Right. Uh, another, looks like another cipher. Yeah. All right. Thankfully, they have the cracker one for this. It's okay. They, they they spoil you in class of ninety eight because they give you like a thing that you can just like basically force the computer oh to yeah absolutely so much easier than some of the other seasons so um, so a ticket looks like a bus ticket okay interesting oh two adults one child oh Ooh, that's gonna be interesting all right, right. trying to figure that out now oh, i'm excited this is gonna be fun. okay so chet if you would like to check out all of these documents um i have gotten them all scanned so if you click on the link for the Discord, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description down below. Uh, just join the Discord under the Hunter Killer channel. That's where this is all going to be under the thread for this specific episode. Uh, and then uh, we're trying to make it better, you know, so this way then if you uh, are watching these on YouTube and you want to join in still, uh, you can go into that specific episode and hopefully avoid some spoilers from ahead of time, but still be able to follow along. Uh, in case you're, you know, a few episodes behind. So let me get that. And then uh, I will get those posted right now. While you're doing those, show me to start there with you the letter. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, the uh, so chat the files are uploaded into the Discord. There you All go. All right. So we always start with Michelle's intro letters just because it kind of gives you a starting point for all the information you're going to be getting. Mm -hmm. So she says, hello, this case has taken quite a, quite, quite a turn. Um, before I can say anything further, I just want to express again how much I appreciate your efforts. If I was alone in all this, I would be too overwhelmed to function properly. As it is, my sleep pattern is a mess, and no amount of coffee or cocktails will help at this point, but I'm determined to see this investigation through to the end. The aforementioned turn comes in the form of an interview with Gavin Nash. What he divulged to me is shocking. But now the results of the toxicology report suddenly make a lot of sense. With this new information in mind, I decided to conduct a second round of witness statements for those okay. who are still under suspicion. So that's interesting. The way she well, through. yeah, but I don't know why Sarah had another one, but maybe something. Maybe we'll see. Mm -hmm. But even out. that, something about those under suspicion, she doesn't throw Gavin in there. So maybe Gavin gives some bomb blockbuster situation that explains an action but gets him out of the running maybe 
Yeah. It's just interesting how that's phrased. Um, their movements are unaccounted for, and I've to, yet to discover or receive any evidence to give them solid alibis. While I was interviewing Nick, he gave me his bar receipt from the reunion night. But please make sure to factor that into your deductions. Although we ruled out Sarah as a suspect, I conducted a second statement for her as well, believing she could provide more detail to corroborate the other stories. That's right, because she might have a lover. Yep. It took quite some time, but I finished compiling a list of home addresses of all the individuals who have been involved or mentioned so far in the case. Ooh. This okay. list is in the zinc folder under the databases tab, blah, blah, blah. Um, my hope is that it will help to further track and confirm suspect movements based on their statements. The scaled map of Chestnut Falls and your incomplete timeline should assist in this endeavor. The rest of the evidence I sent you is from the McDonough home. The fanny pack and empty CD case are from Charlie's box of high school memorabilia. The CD case was slightly tucked into the fanny pack, but I figured I should include both items, to, albeit in separate bags. Um, also at the McDonough's, I found two items hanging on the fridge, a drawing by Charlie and Sarah's daughter Maggie, and a bus ticket. At first glance, I thought Maggie had drawn herself with her parents, but now I see that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, right, because her parents, one's dead. Um, children are usually a little more reliable source of information than adult, adult give them credit for. And con so concerning the bus ticket, the destination strikes me as odd. Or maybe it's nothing. I've been scrambling for any sort of insight lately. Sarah had several extra pamphlets from Charlie's funeral, so I included one for you. I attended the service. It was heartbreaking, to say the least. Mm. I've been so focused on the facts of the investigation that I think I've neglected the reality of it all until now. I want us to catch the murderer, not just to close out the stressful case, but to bring some peace of mind to his loved ones. And most of all, Charlie deserves justice. Right. Justice for Charlie. <laughs> all right. Says everyone. Uh... Man, I was hoping I'm still getting used to my glasses being back on. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else does this, like when you have to wear contacts a lot, right? Like I went from like contacts and then, you know, a little bit ago, probably a half hour ago, took my contacts out and then put my glasses on. My eyes are still trying to adjust to wearing my glasses. So, uh, so there you go. So we figured out why, yeah. So why Sarah has that second one then is because she went back to, you know, and, and discussed some stuff with Sarah and had updated that witness statement. Uh, so. I guess, um, where would we like to start? Good question. You guys have any thoughts? Yeah. Chad, if you have, if you, uh, have an idea of where you would like to start or what you would like to start with, uh, let me know and we'll get that pulled up. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we want to dig through stuff because we're not fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah. Fanny open up. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is yep. yep. So there you go, right? Uh, in, <laughs> it's nice to know I'm a mom's friend. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go. Okay, look, hold on a second. When was the when was uh, the TV show Friends? Was that nineties? Oh yeah, definitely. It was definitely nineties, yep. right? So yep. Unagi. Finish. All right, Unagi. There you go. You said that, and it just made me think of the stinking monkey from the first two seasons. I can't think of his name at the moment, but it didn't sound like uh, the very What was that monkey's name? I can't. Uh, starts with an M. Maurice? No. Does anyone I don't, remember the monkey from Friends? I, I yeah, it definitely now. was an M. No, yeah. Uh, they were talking about him at the reunion special. They were griping about how disgustingly gross he was. Right? <laughs> I guess so, he would get his fingers in everything. Right? <laughs> Welcome in, Evo Pup. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Oh, snap. Okay. So, I immediately just saw Supernova Sleeves Fluff. So, that was one of Robin's quotes in the yearbook. Remember we figured out uh, that was go. a band that was a different Hunter Killer series? Right. Supernova Sleaze is a song by an artist band named Fluff. Um, apparently, Nick hook, got her hooked up with them because she's for showing. Marcel. Yeah, yep. Marcel. Thank you. That was going to drive go. me absolutely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Robin Dupre's original. <laughs> nice. So definitely is a CD that either A, Charlie made for her, or she made for herself. Oh, never mind. She no, made it for made Charlie. It for Charlie. Okay. Oh, yeah. She went girl doodle bonanzas. Right? Yes, they do so, sometimes. Oh. We've got uh, Ooh. a few different things there. Uh, and then we got down here uh, CM and RD. So Which, that looks exactly at? like what's in the yearbook. Right okay. There. But what I'm also looking at is this star. It was okay. something from the yearbook. So originally in the yearbook, 
there were a bunch of stars that looked like Justin may have done them, but it didn't really make a lot of sense for a kid randomly in the yearbook named Justin to be doing it. Okay. It's kind of more of a clown type. Um, but there was these. Mm -hmm. So. A little bit definitely different. definitely her. That's yeah. That's definitely her. We'll see. But it just, it just rung back to the yearbook mm -hmm. for some reason. It just kind of reminded me back. And then I'm looking at this going mountains and a moon. Yeah. Mountains and a sun or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. sure. So. so. I'm part of yeah. me thinking maybe it was a coat or something, but I don't know. Right. Uh, yo, Subaru's welcome in. Hope you are doing well. Hmm. We'll have to figure it out a little bit. I can't tell if there's a code or what. She definitely was very big on the map drawings, though. Like, mm -hmm. that's a map symbol. And I'm pretty sure that might be as well. So, yeah. I'm really curious what the star triple equal sign thing looks like. We'll have to see. Yeah. I just think that she went all out. Let me just tell you this. When I made CDs, I didn't do pretty little labels for the cover. Right? Mine was like but, a piece uh, of paper yeah. with some handwriting on it. Yeah. I usually uh, had, on if it was CD. even that, like yeah. I literally just wrote on the CD, yeah. like mix one. Exactly. Like I didn't even write, well, I didn't even write what songs it was. No, I didn't yeah. even write what that bands was, it was. That was the best part. It was a mystery mm -hmm. CD. You didn't really remember what you put on it right. later. No, she really does like doodling butterflies, though. I will say that much. Sweet. Well, this could be fun. Oh, she drew a happy face. Right. So, all right. So that was found. That was found in Charlie's house. Why would he still have that? That's weird. I don't know. That's just weird. Because for how much he was professing I mean, yeah, his I mean, love for his the... wife the last episode in the Valentine's Day card, right. it was extra schmoopy, right? So, well, it was found partway into a fanny pack, so I don't know. Well, guys, this is definitely the most schmancy fanny wait, pack I've ever said, seen. Wait, hold on. Didn't they say that, um... Hold on, let me... I'm just laughing because what I'm envisioning is a fanny pack... It's something that's like five inches deeper than this that like literally you can rest your arms on as you're walking around because like how much stuff you can yeah find. it was high school memorabilia box oh, that's okay. why so you yeah. can't save just random stuff from high right school. Okay. so it this sticking out of the fanny pack could have just been that it was because it was all shoved in one box right. that it ended up in it not that it was intentional that it was in it um, nothing in the primary chamber okay Was there something in here you didn't tell me, or...? No. I didn't find anything, either. Okay, but apparently there's three chambers? <laughs> Good lord. I just have trouble All believing right. that we wouldn't get anything in the paper. I know. They, I, I found it odd, too, I but I did not find any, like, piece of paper or anything in there. Uh, did you uh, account for all the items? As of right now, yeah. Fanny pack, interview, ticket, case. So, I'm not gonna lie, we might have to check the the um, the blacklight thing. Yeah, yeah. You wanna try it? Yeah, that's fine. You Don't look it. at me weird. Yes, I shoved it in my pocket. <laughs> earlier, I was right. <laughs> Got the light. See, look at that. Silent Moon's already on it. Silent Moon was like, maybe use the light. Yep, exactly. Why are you right in here though? Yeah. I just think it's so funny. It's got these little mini cricket pockets. Yeah. Like, that's so weird. <laughs> what are we right. like? Is there a note missing that we don't know about? Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> you want to look and see? You are right, Salomon. See, look, we don't even look. You're just on it, all right? You're on the same vibe with us. We Which know, love, all right? Again, record. Unagi. Okay, Unagi. I'm, a, I'm perplexed, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it is really nice, but... Check the strap as well. Is there anything with it? She wasn't known to be the one that wrote. Or, well, I guess we don't know if it was her that did this, I guess, yeah. Yeah. We're not seeing anything so far, but... Okay. We might have to check the hints or cues on this one. Yeah. And it may be just that, you know, it was there and just thrown in, that's why. Uh, you know, she said that she threw it in together just because the This would be DD a pretty good red out. herring if that's what they're called, I yeah. can't remember. Uh, yeah. All right, well, okay. what do we want to look at next? So we're looking at the items, but I don't think we're finding anything. 
Go ahead and tell me. That's just scratches right down in this area, right? Just tell me that's just scratches. It doesn't look like words or symbols or anything. But I finally got a spot to glow. With the killer, like, you never want to move on because, like, you're so convinced something's there. I don't see anything. Yeah, it, I think it's just scratches or from being made. It was on the blue part, not the white part. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah, that's just, that's like, just scratches, scratches right? Okay. Stuff, yeah. I thought so, but my light hit at the last second. I was like, what? Such a yeah. tease. All right, well, we'll yeah, move on for can, now, but I'm I not done I can scratch it, it with my uh, thumbnail and it makes another one light up. I have to say, though, compared to some of the stuff they sent, this isn't the worst or hideous. Most of this. <laughs> I don't still know if I would ever go back to the trend that was the 80s or 90s, but, like, apparently it is making a comeback right, right. now. And there's definitely I, a lot thinner of a but, fanny pack than what I'm used to. I think to. the thing I remember the most from the 90s, as far as, like, apparel, was the... Uh, the t-shirts that would change colors if you put your handprint and stuff on it, right? <laughs> so, like, it caused people all the time to come up on and, like, it just slap you on the back and just see if they could leave their handprint on the back. But it would, like, change color based on heat. We're having such different deja vu moments because you go t-shirt and my immediate thought is, Yes, the t-shirts where you cut the little slits up this thing and you beaded them all out and you had dangling. Yeah, because that's yes. what I totally did yeah. when I was in the 90s. <laughs> but that's where my mind went. That's why I'm laughing. So, like, glowing handprints. I'm like, or frilly beads. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All that right. and the tie-dyed white shirts that had all like the you know like the Myrtle Beach and like all the cheesy locations that you'd go with your family on a vacation. Right. Yeah, just the classic white airbrush designed quickie t-shirts exactly i think i checked the strap as well we're gonna have to time out for a second we may have to come back to it once we know what we're looking for i feel like there's got to be a code or something i don't know yeah. i'm not sure well that's why i said to check the strap yeah. well it's good to yeah to sound then so um, we're gonna have so, to ac um, they missed something and forgot to put it in our bag which can happen it's not often but there is always yeah. a human error factor. There's also, I mean but we've also received stuff before where there yeah. wasn't anything inside yeah. of it and it was literally just an item yeah. Was sent. Sometimes they like to just kind of add a little extra values for the fun and, and yeah. giggle things. Wanna go through it. witness statements? Dun, dun, All right. Dun. All right. Shall we start with the wifey? Uh let's see. You want to start with Sarah? We don't have to. Sorry, I forgot yeah. they're in backwards order. You okay to start with Sarah's? Yeah. Okay. Are you wanting to read one or you want me to read this one? You can do the next one. Um, yeah, that works. It's probably from the way that I copied it and put them together. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, probably accidentally good. flipped the pages around when I stapled everything together. All right, so Sarah, part two. Yeah. All right, so this is an interesting place to start off. Yes, <laughs> I can answer some more questions for you. What is this about? No, I was home the entire night. As I said before, Maggie was sick. Plus, we only have the one car. Caveat stopping. She ordered two meals, including a kid's meal, remember? But she also mentioned Charlie had tucked Maggie into bed. I thought that was a little weird. Mm -hmm. The kid's asleep and you're going to wake her up for chicken fingers? Like, for real, real? Right. No one's oh. going to know. No, and, no. Chad, if you joined us in after my previous announcement, all these documents that we're looking at have been scanned. They are up in the Discord. So uh, if you're not a part of the Discord, please join. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, description down below will have the link. Uh, you're more than welcome to join in. Uh, we have a specific investigator's tag, that you, or role, I should say, not tag, but investigator's role. That you can assign to yourself this way you don't miss any updates about uh the hunter killer series that we've been doing and uh you can get all the you know great updates that we send out through that i may regret not going in order we'll find out <laughs> nita said that oh well yes she did stop by briefly i didn't think it was important enough to mention she's been a good friend for a long time and charlie and i our marriage was i love charlie i do he was sweet and caring and funny and a fantastic father to Maggie, but we were a bit in a bit of a rough patch. We had been for some time. Charlie didn't want to give up. That was never his style. He loved me and Maggie so much, and he would have done any, or he would do anything to make it work. He was constantly worried about providing for his family, and making sure we had the best. He was adamant that Maggie was going to an Ivy League school. It was sweet. It's funny now that he's gone. I can only seem to remember the good things about him. Why couldn't I have done that while he was still around? But yes, to answer your question, Nita did stop by after the reunion. She wanted to check in on me and drop something off. She didn't stay long, maybe five minutes? I can't say for sure. I've been a bit, I mean, it's been hard since, I just want all this to be over. 
Please tell me you got a new lead. I need something, anything about what happened to Charlie. Mm. Super interesting. Drops right. Food. What was her excuse? Because I thought hers was she went to the hotel or something. What Nina's excuse was in the first episode? I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I, I don't remember what hers was from the from the previous. Yeah. All right, you want me to go over Nita's? Yeah, that'd be great. Let me look up that. All right. This one is the uh, this one's an updated witness statement from Nita Patel. Uh, so it says, we could do this again if we have to. Like I said last time, uh, you know, I went to my hotel to grab my wallet before going to the Taberna. So there you go. So that's Ooh. what she said that she had done. Okay. Uh, what do you mean unaccounted? Okay, I went to Sarah and Charles' house before heading to the diner. I know I didn't mention this. It didn't seem relevant. I didn't want you asking Sarah about me when she clearly has bigger things on her plate right now. We're good friends. The three of us went to college together and introduced them to each other. Yeah, Sarah and me are still close. I felt bad that she needed to stay home with Mags while the rest of us hung out. I'm sorry, what does this have to do with Charlie's murder? The murderer is still out there while you're standing here asking me pointless questions. It's been months. Do you even have a lead suspect? You're too busy trying to figure out my timeline, but what was Charlie's? Why was he at the Grove at all? I wasn't anywhere near the grove that night. I grabbed my wallet, I dropped my or by Sarah's, I said hi to her and good night to Maggie, and I went to the diner. Are we done now? Interesting. So she said hi to her and good night to Maggie, meaning A Maggie woke up or B Maggie was not actually staying asleep. Mm. And Very possible. Really tucked her in she was supposedly sick, right? Yeah. So that's just interesting still. Okay. Again, very defensive, very very neat. Right. <laughs> Yo, Hyper Harpy. Hi. I am here. Welcome. Dun, dun, dun. So good to see you. All right. All right. Should we go with X? Uh, Yeah. You want to do Robin? Sure. Okay. I'm curious. All right. I thought we were done with questioning. It's not like it's a problem, but, well, I've been trying to move on from this whole tragedy like everyone else. Forcing me to keep talking about it won't help much. No, I didn't mean it like that. You're not forcing me. Yes, I did consent to this. If you're asking me what my relationship with Charlie was, we were friends. Maybe we weren't as close as we were when we were teenagers, but that's just how life is. Michelle, we went to high school together. I assumed I didn't need to tell you that Charlie and I dated back then. Is that relevant somehow? I'm just a little confused. It was ages ago. Look, I'm sorry. I can't remember specific times at all that. And all that. I didn't think I'd have to account for every single step I took that night. My house? I lived next to the family farm. Well, I didn't mention it because I thought you knew where I lived. I mean, you grew up in town. You grew up in town too, so I figured you knew. Was I wrong to assume? No, I just don't get why all this matters. What I said in the last interview is still true, so there's nothing else that I can add. Mm, okay. Expensive, JK. So, Robin's from this, I'm already about, getting yeah. an idea that we have to figure out where her farm is on that map. Okay. So, that'll be interesting. All right. This uh, next witness statement is the updated witness statement for Nick Matsukas. Uh, let's see. You've got uh, Nick saying, this is getting out of hand. I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea about me or my family. My mother told me she talked to you. She also told me she lied to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, she just wants to protect me. I was not at the taverna when she said. The first time we talked, I told you the truth. I went to the bar. Yes, I have proof. I went through my junk drawer yesterday to find this. Give me a second. Here, look at this. Charlie was supposed to meet me there, but he didn't make it. The personal... Uh, so they're talking about... Uh, yeah, so this right here, which is the bar receipt. So that we can take a look at that here in just a second. That's this one right here. Mm -hmm. Uh all right let me scroll up here as well so you can read nick's statement as i go through and then uh the personal things i'm sorry what are you talking about oh that look i shouldn't be telling anyone this it could get me in a lot of trouble at work i made a mistake by talking about these things with charlie that's why i needed to see him after the reunion nothing else i'm sorry i need to keep my job so i can't say more that's why i gave you that memo last time you wanted to talk to show you this is coming from my company not me and it has nothing to do with Charlie. I should never have involved him. It's my problem. I'll deal with it. 
I just got used to talking to Charlie about my problems. He is, I mean, he was a great listener. I wish I could talk to him now. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I think in one of his statements in the past episode or two, he had said something about how he was trying really hard to find Charlie to talk about something important that night that was personal and on his mind. And I think it was in regards to the video when he realized that it was posted and mm -hmm. that he'd gotten recorded complaining about his work and the stress and everything. Right. So, Nick, it might not be such a bad guy after all. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's check out this ticket. This ticket shall well, do you want to you. see? Do you want to see the bar thing first? Is that what you meant by ticket? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant ticket. Receipt, ticket. So, ticket there we go. All right, we got the uh, bar tab receipt here. Ooh, much bigger. Never mind, we'll just go with that version. Um, I'm not going to lie, I really saw the Aloha partner, and it just made me smile and be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> because trying to combine very go. country, saloon vibes with very Hawaiian, Native Island vibes, and it's a really freaking hilarious combination. I'm so enjoying it. Right. <laughs> So Francis was the person who served him, and it was at nine forty-two. Right. So yeah, and that our probably rules him out. Our time of death was death was between nine thirty-five to nine forty. Okay. So I just rounded in the middle until myself nine thirty-seven. Oh, uh, they keep referencing that I think at the end of each episode. Oh yeah. Um, they keep specifically stating 937. I know Which, that our range... I really wish we could actually figure it out down to that absolute of a time. Yeah, line. but uh, I know we figured it out down to that, which amazes me that we figured it out to that five minute range, even. That's true. Yeah. Um, I don't think we got that close with any of the other people no, going on at no, all. No. Uh, all right. So, yeah. So it looks like, uh, Francis, yep, served. Well, if he checked out at 942. Yeah. It's he interesting because he still wouldn't have. If he paid at 942, my only question on that is he still had to go over to his parents, but he didn't show up at his parents till like 1030 something. Right. But yeah. I mean, he could have gone somewhere. He closed out his tab at 942, yeah. which means that there's no way that he would have been able to make it from the murder scene True. all the way to the bar True. and then order food, get food or drink or whatever it is. It probably looks mm -hmm. like it's just a drink. And pay for it all within yeah, two minutes. That's true. So, I mean, I, I agree. I think I have a feeling that Nick, Nick. I, I have a feeling Nick's the one that we're going to end up ruling out then at the end of this. Yeah. But I want to really dig into these other things because I don't know though. Nita seemed to have something that might prefer in a sense this episode too. So we'll have to see. Okay. All right. Where are so, we going next, guys? Um, because yeah, we we have the bus ticket. Um, and then we have. Few others that, and we have that crayon drawing with the you know, initial. I'm always stuff. down for the coded coded bus ticket, that right? Good. Especially because the only person we know using this code specifically was the person named N talking to Sarah. Right. Uh, I hope that's the crayon drawing. Uh, let's see. I think we need more context for the crayon drawing, so I didn't want to do that yet. Yeah. There we go. Although Plus I can tell you that kid can draw better circles and heads than I can. <laughs> Like, that's, she, she actually drew pants. I didn't, I don't think I put clothes on, like, my stick figures until probably, like, 14. Right. <laughs> I never knew how to draw some of my stick figures. I wasn't very good at drawing. All right, so. All right. So it's for three people. Mm. Yeah, so we've got uh, Reynolds Bus Lines Incorporated uh, going from Chicago, Illinois. What's going to Port Authority Bus Terminal, New York. So from Chicago to New York. Now, do we know what night the reunion was held on? I don't remember. Don't remember I don't either. Would you, I mean, his yeah. his was his uh, night of death. Was that like a Friday? That's what I don't know. I'm trying to think. Hmm. I don't know if it actually says anywhere what day of the week or what night it mm -hmm. was. They don't date things intentionally. I'll have to look at that more. Oh, yeah. the one way too. Is that they're not coming back. Right. One way arrival. Um. Yeah. I've heard every word. So I think. Uh. According or with that drawing. Yeah. We'll get to that drawing more in depth here in just a little bit. Um. But if I remember right, it said something about. Uh, that Gray Michelle Gray found uh two items hanging on the fridge: a drawing by Charlie and Sarah's daughter Maggie, and a bus ticket. At first glance, I thought Maggie had drawn herself with her parents, but now I see that's not the case. So I don't know who she drew herself, like who, um, oh, 
No, 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 that she drew herself with her parents, but that's not the case because one of them's not her parent. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's so, what yeah, I we'll thought get... in the middle of the reading of the Michelle yeah, 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 Gray yeah. thing. It took me a second. Uh, I was thinking there, she was saying that the kid wasn't Maggie. That that's she didn't what draw I herself. took it as, yeah. too, and I'm like, no, that's definitely uh, Maggie. There's but no yeah. product question there. So, yeah, so we got, uh, so this is, yeah, so it looks like a one-way ticket. It's going, uh, departing at 10 a.m. on Friday. Uh, with arrival at 4.50 a.m. on Saturday. Look at that, your theory. Yeah, oh, there you go. Uh, let's see. I wonder what hints we would have on this cipher. I don't know if there are in the last few times you just had to brute force it through the website yeah they provide that key for a reason i mean i think you can do it i just i think you have to basically do it by ruling out into fall which is a very time lengthy procedure right i'm working so shift ciphers. Get... So if you want to play on it in a different way i'm working on the shift ciphers now oh you are okay yeah are you are you using the tool on the website oh yeah okay if they provide it i can't say it's cheating right exactly <laughs> So far, it looks like Goblin League Greek right now. <laughs> Are you using the automatic? Uh, no, I'm using the shift tracker or one number. The shift decoder? One, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm using. It's just coming out different versions of Goblin League Greek, though. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there is one called automatic decoder okay, as well. Oh, no, you don't have to. I, was just, I can. I didn't know if you knew that one was there. Well, I don't know if it does shift ciphers, though, on that one. Mm. I assumed that if they had... All right, so this is the cipher we're, we're that we're looking at right now. Oh. Um, yeah. You called it. Let's see. What's it say? It says. All right, so that message says, "One more week, love. Can't wait." So two adults and one child. So somebody's planning i i think that is i don't know that that ticket is uh because it's ciphered but that's weird to be hanging on the fridge still right like charles would ask about that like oh hey well are we going to new york like mm -hmm. i mean i feel like and that would be odd charles doesn't use that code with her that is no different yeah and, charles wouldn't yeah. charles would have just wrote on the back saying yeah, one no. more would have just said it wouldn't have coded it yeah Unless maybe they were going to get away together, and then when he got murdered, everything changed, and now she can't leave or something. Yeah. Thank you. Yo, Sid, with the Tier 1 resub. Thank you so much. Seven months. Look at that. Uh, nice. That is amazing. I can't think of anyone that has anything in New York, though. I do agree. That's very weird. Yeah. Is Nita connected to New York at all? Because the last time she was a writer. Well, we the... can... Um, so there was that list with all the addresses. We can yeah. look at that right now if you want, or we can look at... Um, we can possibly look at the... Uh, take a look at the funeral pamphlet real quick. And then we've also got that crayon drawing. So... That we can take a look at. I was trying to see to say what day of the week he died on, but I don't see it. Right yeah. Um, um, what do you think? Well, let's take a look at the, the funeral think, packet yeah, first, yeah, yeah. and then uh, we'll take a look at the addresses. Because I think that addresses are going to be where, like you said, we're going to have to start mapping out. Oh, yeah. That's going to be like, where um, people are actually like living at on yeah. that map. And that may be something that we do. Uh, well, I've been saving every address like from the beginning of this season yeah like i have like a miscellaneous character section i've been putting any business any facility any name any address oh yeah anthony's you name it so it yeah. may not be well and it may be something that we needed thought. yeah like on that map itself right mm -hmm. like we may mm -hmm. in between episodes we can actually yeah. like tack where True. everybody is True. Yeah. um because of how long i think that might take oh speaking of i did put a map on the website i can't remember if it was box Three or four. Yeah. I ended up posting what all we knew. So like any of the locations we knew, I kind of did an overlay okay. of that. So that is on there. So you guys can at least follow along with us a little bit if we Perfect. do start trying on that. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Sid, so much for at least popping in. I appreciate it. So that definitely leads to more questions because I agree. I can't fathom that would have been and and if she's trying to hide an affair in the midst of all this stuff with her husband, right. like, why broadcast it? Yeah, why would you put that on the fridge? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, but frankly, even if I was having an affair, like 
if my child draws a drawing of me and my new person and my old person's dead in the ground, like that's a little weird to be hanging on the right, ground without yeah. attracting some suspicion. Yeah. I, it just seems odd. Like that would be such a trigger. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not gonna Unless this stuff was hung up on the fridge mm -hmm. after. Maybe. Like after he died. Yeah. But again, that would make you look so suspicious if an investigator's coming by. Like, I mean, I mean but maybe it was hung, maybe it was hung up after the first <laughs> maybe yes okay. you know first she interview and then she, she thought, thought that, she was in the clear, that she was in the clear yeah. so she then I had it hanging up on the fridge I I don't know that I could think. Uh, all right Turn yeah so high property yeah so hunter killer if you are going to be doing cases uh don't get rid of anything from previous episodes because mm. you you will be referencing stuff you will oh, be yeah. pulling stuff from previous episodes and legitly so. like each box tends to get harder mm -hmm. and no matter what set you're doing the codes will get a little trickier like the stuff just gets more difficult yeah. box six is always going to be the hardest usually yeah no absolutely all right oh uh and then Okay, first off topic, you... real quick. Hyper RP, don't let me, or if you can send me a message, don't let me forget. I need to ask you a question about VTuber stuff. Uh, oh. All right. That's an interesting quote. <laughs> the quote they picked out for him is an interesting one. It's an old meme with a goodie. All Google. right. So, okay, so are oh, you talking about on the back one? Uh, it's, yeah, it's I guess it would technically be on the back page of the paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be the back page of yeah. it. Yeah. It's just an interesting, it's it's a, it's one of my favorite sayings just because it reminds me that when there are bad times, good times will be coming. It just, there has to be some good and bad to balance. Yeah. So, but it, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. So I just thought it was interesting that they yeah. chose that. So it's uh, Ecclesiastes 3.1-4. So uh, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Uh, so this is honoring the wonderful life of Charles McDonough, born March 22nd, 1980. Uh, beloved son, husband, father, and friend, we celebrate your life. Uh, so five years before me, and he looks younger than me. What the hell? All right. All right. So. All right. No, you're good. Need a birthday again. I keep mixing up the date of birth. Ah. So, okay. All right. So uh, we've got inside of the pamphlet, we've got the obituary and the order of service. Uh, so we'll go over the, I'll read the obituary very quickly here. Let me get, uh, there we go. So Charles McDonald was taken from us unexpectedly last Saturday. So it was on a Saturday. Okay. Um, he was born in Chestnut Falls to Eon and Sayoba. Sayoba McDonough. He is survived by his wife, Sarah, and his daughter, Maggie. He was a graduate of Chestnut Falls High School in 1998. He studied chemistry at the University of Chicago. Uh, so yeah, he studied or he studied chemistry at the University of Chicago, where he continued on to earn his farm his farm D. Uh, it was there he met Sarah, his future wife. He missed his hometown, however, and decided to return to work as a pharmacist. Shortly after coming home, Maggie was born. Maggie was the light of Charles's life. Charlie had never been happier, and he did everything he could to make sure she was a happy and healthy child. Charlie was a kind soul. He took he could make friends with anyone, and he had a way to brighten any room he walked into. His love, humor, and kindness has touched so many. In memory and in the spirit of Charlie, his family would like to draw attention to Maggie's College Fund. The fund was created a few years ago by Charlie in order to secure his loving daughter's future. Please consider supporting Charlie's wish. All right. A order of service. So uh, they did presiding Reverend Kim. Uh, M 136, I know that my Redeemer lives. Family prayer was done by Sarah. Life sketch uh, done by the mother. Uh, followed by Antonio as a speaker. Chestnut Falls Choir doing a musical number. Aura McBride, the cousin, also a speaker. Uh, intermediate hymn of 166, Abide With Me. Closing remarks, Reverend Kim. 
Closing hymn 152, God be with you till we meet again. And closing prayer, Reverend Kim. Uh, internment at Chestnut Falls Presbyterian Church, 112 Maple Avenue, Chestnut Falls, Illinois. Yo, Rack Rod, hello. That is the same church that baptized the horse. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. not that so funny. All right. <laughs> so next up, we have a list is that... um, of names and addresses and everything else. So Are we needing to do this before that, do you think? Oh, yes. Actually, I sorry. forgot about that. Yep. I was thinking we need to probably I did do that. I forget that we people. did miss that. Sorry. Hey, exquisite. Hey, hey. Sorry, tiny deviation. We're going to do the Gavin thing first. <laughs> yep. That was, yeah, I completely forgot we hadn't done that one yet. So it's very good catch and very good call. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gavin's about to spill the dirt, y'all. All right. Do you want to read as uh, Michelle Gray and I'll I read be, as, I'll be in as Nash? Yes, sounds good. All right. Although I'm starting to realize you get tiny lines and I get really big ones. Well, <laughs> like uh, scam. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Truly, <laughs> sorry. So, as long as your life, you go, yeah. Oh, I, I right. married that. I said, I said yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Exquisite. Okay, Woo! Gavin is a suspect. All right. <laughs> shifty, shifty. All right. <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> Assert your dominance, Red Panda. <laughs> And now I'm blushing. All right. All right. Okay, Gavin, you're here today of your own volition, and you acknowledge that what you say here is the truth. Yes. Why are you here? This has been on my mind for a while now. I felt you looking my way, and I can't afford any more bad press, so I needed to say something. Regarding Charles McDonough? That's right. Okay, let's start from the beginning then. Please describe what really happened the night of your high school reunion. I want to preface this first by saying I did not kill Charlie. Okay. I'm not responsible for that. You seem awfully nervous, Mr. Nash. I need to figure out how to explain this right. Take your time. So I arrived at the reunion around the time everyone else did. That part's true. I was looking forward to seeing Charlie again. I heard he was tied down and living in Chestnut Falls working as a pharmacist. And I thought, Gavin. You're going to live or give Charlie the time of his life, just like the good old days. Charlie and I, we used to have a blast. Such a blast. But when Charlie settled down, the life was just sucked out of him, you know? He wasn't the Charlie I knew. So you felt resentful? Just have to put this up here on here. There no, go. you're good. <laughs> and it'll be line 18 for you. Not resentful. Disappointed, maybe. Annoyed that he let himself get like that. What happened after you arrived at the reunion? I schmoozed him at first. I made small talk to people arriving. Caught them up on all my achievements and so on. They hadn't seen me in a while. I saw Charlie and we talked and I tried to convince him to have some fun with me like old times. And what do you mean by have some fun? I had some volume in my pocket. Charlie and I used to get pretty messed up. You gave Charlie some Valium? Yes. Did Charlie say anything when you gave him the Valium? Did he intend to drink alcohol along with it? Well, he didn't technically say anything about it. What do you mean by technically? Well, I asked him if he wanted to. And? He said no. I couldn't believe it. Charlie Mac saying no? He said he wanted to have a clear head for when he got home to the missus. Said she'd be mad if he didn't come home sober. I knew he'd be in the doghouse eventually. I knew it when they first started dating. In my personal opinion, his wife really sucks. Such a stick in the mud. Anyway, I knew Charlie was saying no because of the old ball and chain. So I... Go on. I put a little something in his drink. So you put something in his drink without his knowledge. Yes, that sounds worse when you say it out loud. How did you do it? I'm a horrible interviewer. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing so hard right now. <laughs> I crushed up one of my pills and I put it in his drink when he wasn't looking. I just wanted him to be fun Charlie again. 
just for that night while I was there. I wanted to have a good time, and I wanted my friend back. When did you put the Valium in his drink? Around 8.15, I think. I'm not sure. I, I took some myself, so my memory is a little fuzzy. And where did you get the Valium from? I didn't get it from Charlie, if that's what you're thinking. I assume you already know all about old Charlie Boy's nice little operation. He was the town's only pharmacist, after all. <laughs> I became aware of it recently. Well, anyway, Valium was mine. Brought it with me. Now you can stop whining about a drug test. That makes so much more sense now. Mm -hmm. All right. What did you do after you put Valium in Charlie's drink? Well, while I was waiting for the drugs to kick in, I started chatting up this cute chick from my class, Jenny Crane. We went off to the janitor's closet for a while. I guess I needed to blow off some steam, and it worked. Came back to the party feeling like a million bucks, and so did she. <laughs> I explained... That, it, that explains why the janitor's closet was all messed up, and uh, what's his uh, name had to... Arthur. Yeah, Arthur had to fix the janitor's closet. Oh, my God. <sighs> uh, um, blah, blah, blah. I don't need a whole lot of details about your sexual exploits, Mr. Nash. I mean, just ask her. She should back up my story. She had a great time. Uh, sure. And don't worry, I intend to check out everything you say here. That's good. That's good. What time did you step away from the reunion with Miss Crane? About uh, a little before nine, I think. Okay, so we already took it. What time did you return to the party? Uh, nine thirty. The party was over by then. What did you do then? Oh, uh, well, I tried to find Charlie, but everyone had left by then. I think a few few people stayed behind, but I didn't see them while I was sneaking out. Charlie's car wasn't even in the parking lot. Did he leave with anyone? Do you know when he left? No, I, I don't. And I have no idea if anyone was with him when he left. He had plans to go to Nick's diner, uh, where he used to hang out as kids. Or where we used to hang out as kids. Uh, so I assumed Charlie was headed there. Figured I had some time, though, so I went back to my hotel to freshen up. Didn't want to smell like booze. But I do remember ending up at the diner, and Charlie wasn't there. What time did you get to your hotel? Jesus, do I have to remember every single little thing? That's how it's done, Mr. Nash. Probably probably around 9.40. I wasn't looking at my watch, but it, I knew at least I had enough time before meeting up at the den. I need you to try and remember as much as you can and trace your steps. The fact that you left the reunion and disappeared before turning up at the diner doesn't reflect well on you. That's really all I can remember, I swear. Fine, I'll write that down too. Listen. Listen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Listen, I I know I looked kind of suspicious. I wouldn't be here if I was guilty of something as insane as murder. I admit I lied at first, but can you blame me? Charlie and I used to be close, and there's a lot going on in my life right now, and I don't really need any of this. Right. Is that all? This isn't this isn't going to be made public or anything, right? There's like confidentiality between us. You are part of this investigation, Mr. Nash. What you have said here will become a matter of public record eventually. Oh, shit. <laughs> if that's all, I'll be showing you out now. Thank you for coming, Mr. Nash. I will be checking up on all of this to make sure it tracks. If you remember anything else, please contact me. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Sure thing. I just like, oh, that totally <laughs> sounds like Gavin from start to finish. All right. Oh, All right, so hi, Barbara. I know who done it officially. I am fantastic. a genius. Yeah, uh, and if you're wrong, this whole thing is rigged, right? <laughs> <laughs> hi, pup. What do you want? Hi. I know, I know, I know, I know. We have it's going to be dinner time after we get done tonight. Okay, yeah. after we're done, we'll we'll feed you dinner. Okay. We don't torture them. They had a late they had a late breakfast. They I know. Live. They yeah. will live. They don't think they will live, but they will live. Bless you. Would you stop sneezing all over me? All right. I like you, cooties. Oh, Hyper Harpy giving uh, redeeming gift treats to pet. Let me grab a oh, treat bag. Oh, forget dinner. You can go straight for the nummy nums. I don't know where the little one is. She might come running when we get the packet down. That's it. We're waiting to see if the little one figures out the packet's opening up. All right, come here. Oh my gosh. Uh, you better not let her take off or she's going to take your headset yeah. with her. Yeah, come here. Okay. You have to move so I can see you. Uh, no. Oh, no. There you go. Oh, you need brush so bad, dog. 
Oh, so she's blind and like deaf and just really old at this point. Hopefully so you can see her. Okay, very well. Ready? Sit. Ready? Good. Girl. Nice job, babe. Where's the other one? She hasn't come running. I don't think she has a clue. Age is right. a powerful thing. <laughs> so we got uh, what do we got next? We just really just have the list of addresses left, right? Yeah, I still feel like this means something. I'm just not sure what yet. Yeah, I'm not sure so, yet either on that. Let me go grab the other pup. Okay. That is a lot of addresses. O M G. Yikes. Okay. How do I can do this? All right. Look at that, Ashley Banks. The ex wife right. lives in Beverly Hills, where Gavin lives. Shocking. Yeah, over here. I don't know what chair. You say short stuff. Okay, uh, chat, we're going over addresses at the moment, so let me grab those. Where is that at? Oh, yeah, it's down here. There is an obscene amount of chest and falls addresses. There you go. So, yeah, there was a lot of addresses in this. I will get this uploaded into the Discord as well right now. There you go. There is that with the Discord. Okay. Here. Hey, you already had yours. Okay, for anybody that was nerdy like me and went really deeply into the pharmacy register, this is fantastic. I just found a couple of people that were on the, the pharmacy register. <laughs> this is yeah. really long, though. Sure. She's a Pete. Well, there. Okay, so... Where are you trying to go? So, I finally found Charles and Sarah. We're at the Newton Court, like we thought. And then... It looks like his mom lives in town as well, so we'll map that one. Um, good news, Nick doesn't live with his parents. He has some kind of a life. Okay. So that's encouraging. <laughs> Aura lives out of town in, in Chicago, which we knew. Uh, what are these addresses? So this is the addresses of... Um... Well, it says everyone that we basically heard that of. has come up during the case. Yes. But there's a bunch of these names that I don't recognize, but... They're from the pharmacy register and some of the more teeny-weeny documents. Like, this oh, is like okay, okay. Body. yes. Yeah, it's like, like everyone. Banks, Gavin's ex-wife. Yeah. Jamal so... Mudden was on the pharmacy list. Like, Henry, I don't know. But yeah. yeah like, oh, I so I did, I did when I copied and pasted this into a Word document, I did go ahead and separate them out by... Uh, so there's some spaces between the letters for the last names but uh make it a little bit easier uh but it looks like yeah we're gonna have to probably just sort through this and go through and find well i found someone that lives in new york david chen okay he used to be friends with michelle and some other chick he's in the book oh okay yeah don't so know is that is that it. oh so maybe they're going to new york or something because of david chen potentially like i'm just trying to find connections to new york right now this guy. right he was okay. with Michelle and whoever that chick is. Okay. I'm just trying to find any New York connection before we start mapping all of those Chestnut Falls ones out. Oh, oh yeah. God, there's a lot of them. No, ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's we the found thing. Robin's we're address. Gonna that's going to be important. Remember? Because she kept saying, like, we should know where she lives. She lives near her farm, blah, 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 blah. Right. So, because she also, I think, claimed she did something like go home in between or something. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. So, I'm thinking. Era Farley. Who's that? Wait. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot of what's in there. Uh, I wonder if these addresses are actual places. Oh my god, I'm absolutely loving the Finkels, the John and Julian Finkel. <laughs> all these names make me think of somebody else or something else. They're like all plays on words. Like, I wonder if like these addresses actually exist. Like, would we be able to actually go there? I hope so. Uh. Michelle Gray. Let's see. <laughs> uh, do we figure out who the wife was texting? So we, we think it's it's had to have been Nita, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So That's uh, because theory. Nita and her were really good friends in Chicago, or not Chicago, but in college. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, so that's what we're trying to figure out now. As far as the drawing goes, uh, the drawing. So if we look at the drawing. 
It says uh, mom, M, and N. So the N, I mean, I'm guessing that's Nita, but yeah. I, I mean, I'm well, I'm you thinking. You were trying to decide between Nick and Nita before, because like, but we yeah, we but I'm pretty positive you, the but, drawing shows yeah. it's Nita, and you know, and at this point, if the child drew it, like, mm -hmm. I mean, they, I mean, how did that's the child that's must have drawn it? Get. I'm guessing the child drew it. That this isn't like the dad being killed. This is you know after um the funeral yeah well because like he's buried in the ground and it's covered up so like, right so yeah. i'm guessing it's the funeral yeah uh <laughs> meaning that you know it's after the funeral so or maybe her and her mom and whoever that is goes to visit daddy's grave right yeah yeah that's kind of how i'm taking it too very possible yeah, yeah. so trying to find a lot of new york addresses and i'm getting none except for the one so far this is bizarre right I think oh, I it's okay. It's 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 it. uh, yeah, this is down. new for this drawing is new for this episode. The texting part was the pre was a previous episode, um, but uh, yeah, the uh, this drawing, anything that we're looking at right now that I've got up here, this is all new. Uh, anything in the Discord under episode five is all the new documents. Okay, so Nita still has a Chicago address. Okay. That has been confirmed, at least. Fraggle? Are you get it? I mean, these Fraggle are, Rock? Yes! Yeah. Like, they're literally playing with our childhood right yeah, now. Like, exactly. All these words are meant to... I swear, one of them in here made me think of Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Think oh, about yeah. It. Like, just every little thing they can throw in that right. is a name that we're going to recognize for our generation. They're, they're just having a blast with us right now. Well, so... Iowa. With these addresses, I think... You know, we'll have to look out at this. We'll look at all the suspects first. Uh, the okay. nine suspects. I feel like we need to look at those yeah, first and map those out on the okay. map if they're from Chestnut Falls. Yeah. Uh, I have all of those highlighted. I was just going through really yeah. quick and looking for anyone that might matter. And also the New York connection. Well, which I'm so, not oh. yeah. I mean, honestly, the if her address is Chicago, if Nita's address is Chicago, that ticket was where it was going from Chicago. Yeah. Not from Chestnut Falls. No. Nope. It was going from Chicago. Mm hmm Oh, here we go. Antonio. So. So I found two people so far that are in New York. One's Robert Villanueva, which is like the bad boy. Like yeah. Like punk, like, yeah. He was like the, the, the bad boy. I don't remember school. him being a suspect, though. No, he's not. I'm, oh, okay. I'm just thinking, I'm trying to figure out why they went to New York. It does not make sense to me. Just, I mean, they could weird. have just chosen New York. I mean, if, well, if our theory says, is, is that... Michelle um, puts an enunciation on it, though. Like, she says, look at the location. It's really weird. Why would they go there? Right. Like, if she's putting that kind of enunciation on it, to me, there's a reason. But you're right. It doesn't seem like there's going to be. So, so let me look. Yeah, the destination strikes me as odd, or maybe it's nothing. Okay, so maybe it's a red herring. Okay. Um, I've been scrambling for any sort of insight lately. So okay, she's grabbing. Uh, this is what you're telling me. Got it. Do you have some post-it notes in here? Or should I go grab some so we can mark some of the stuff behind us? Oh, you want to do addresses now? Is that what you were wanting to? Do? Oh no, no, no I didn't. No, 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 no. I was saying we could in between episodes we can mark all of the. Oh, yeah. okay. Because okay, that's okay. going to take a while to find all of those so and ask you then, who track are you it all. Leaning towards innocence wise. That's what. I, yeah. So that's what I was going to do next as well. It was um. So I think we we're on the same page. The I'm leaning towards. Um. Who was it that we said had the bar tab? Uh, was that Nick? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. At this point, I'm I'm thinking Nick is eliminated. I mean, with with that uh, with that bar tab. So, I mean, that bar tab says is stamped for nine forty two p.m. Mm -hmm. And so, I I really do feel that that that's the case. That you know, there's no way that he would have made it. Right. From the murder scene, all the way over here, ordered a drink and paid for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah. I do agree with that too. Let's go for Nick. 
Yeah. And then we can shoot and find out the fainting pack thing. It's driving me bananas. Uh, correct, Salmon. So we are only getting rid of one suspect this episode. Episode six will leave us with three suspects. Um, and then we will decide between those three. Instead of eliminating a suspect, we'll decide who we think did it. Okay. Let me get this website pulled up here. Uh, do you have the... Actually, I have the paper right here. Let's do this. Baby girl, it's going to be all right. Okay. <clears throat> I need to go to... This one... Oh, uh, I was also going to see if there was any hints about your fanny pack, too. Oh, oh yeah, I was going to. I was going to. Uh... Okay, uh, let's look at. Uh, as far as exclusive, as far as the one that looks like your. Uh, friend in high school. I'm not sure. So these are those are the images from that. So there you go. Um, you can somewhat see some of these other ones, but there's uh, there's Nick. That's Antonio. There's Gavin, and there's uh, you know Rob. So we got Nita, Nick, Robin, and Gavin left. That's what we're thinking too. Silent room. Right, exactly. And on top of that, there was only the one car, right? So, like, there was no other tire tracks of leaving the scene, like, nothing else. So, uh, you know, trying to get from that, the murder scene, all the way back to this bar, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the bad boy looking guy in the yearbook. Robert Villanueva. Is that happened? the bad boy looking Guy it's, one of, it's one of many, but yeah, I, I called him the bad boy. I'll show you why. He's got like a leather jacket and he's got the punk stance. That one? Oh, okay. Is that, is that it? Ex Ex Hearing my have to bring it up closer. Is that the one you're thinking or you're thinking of? Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Perfect. He lives in New York, apparently. He's got one of the addresses for New York. Him and like two other guys. Yeah. So it does not look like there's anything other than the bus ticket hint and a bus ticket reveal. That is garbage. Yep. I'm displeased. Um, the cipher for the handwriting on the back of the bus ticket has been used previously in the season. So that's what it was. It was one that had been previously used between, probably between Nita right. and Sarah. Yeah, yeah, but again, on that one, we never had a clear way to break it except. Oh yeah, that's well. right. Yeah, we didn't have. Like we could way. have grounded out, like some people have, but it took hours. Oh, you have yeah. to go back through and do basic code breaking, which is brutal if you don't have a hint on how to shift or decode right. it. Yeah, if you don't have the yeah. you know the the key. Um. All right, and then uh, so again, so we've already said what it says. So I'll open that up so you can see it one more time. <laughs> Um, so the message is encoded with the, oh, with the Q-W-E-R-T-Y cipher. Oh. I don't know. Uh, which was found in the text messages in episode two. Uh, it reads, one more week, love. Can't wait. So my guess is that, yeah, that it's Nita and Sarah are having, we're having an affair. Uh, now, whether Nita is the one that is going to be the end up being the murderer or not, I, I don't know. It almost feels like that would be too easy because they already seem to have a plan to run away together. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, just, I feel like that might I mean, be It does seem kind of easy. All right. So we are uh, we are eliminating, we said Nick, right? Yeah. Okay. Although, reading this sure makes her look guilty. Energy rightly applied in any direction will accomplish anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like murder 101. All right. Let me All click right, on Nick. Nick and we are correct. I'm always so nervous we're going to be wrong. I know. Right. So there you go. So we are absolutely correct. Um, so Nick's career was at risk after he drunkenly divulged dark secrets about his work to Charlie during Artie's karaoke performance. So that was what made us suspicious of Nick was that because he was so worried about his job. 
um, and worried about Charlie saying something. Uh, Nick also shared that the LFOA facility was putting pressure on him to make sure that the information did not continue to spread. Um, so as far as means, Nick did have access to diazepam through his work as a neuroscientist. Opportunity, though, is where we what we used in order to eliminate Nick, right? So Nick could not have killed Charlie because he was at Manifest Destiki uh, during the time of his murder. So that is corroborated with the witness statement from episode two, surveillance photos from episode four, um, and the bar tab receipt from this current episode of episode five. Uh, based on this information, um, what? Nick is one of the two people that can now be eliminated oh. as a suspect. Oh, that's a twisty. So they're only going to have us fight down through the final two in the final episode, apparently. Freaky. So who else do we eliminate? Honestly, I was wondering Nita. There were a few, or, oh, the, Gavin, Gavin, Gavin. Yeah, but we don't have anything to back up Gavin's stories, do we? Was there anything we missed online that we needed to still get no, into? No, that was it. The list of names was the only thing. Oh, no, no, no. Let, wait, you know what? I know what it is. What? We need to look at Gavin's um, address. Yeah. His, yeah. And Robin's address, remember? Well, we... Um... Gavin was staying at a hotel. He doesn't live in town. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, he went back to the hotel to shower. Did Robin... What did Robin say she did before going to the bar? My understanding was that she looked around for Nick, couldn't find him, and then she... Wasn't really sure what happened with everyone else between the two, and I thought she said she went back to her home for a snitch, but I can't remember. Yeah. For, or have them all by, like... Gavin did give the interview, yes. But there's nothing... Uh, the interview with... made him look suspicious, but not right. in the normal way, yeah. Um. Um. So he... 9.30 is when he left. He okay. went to... Sorry, go ahead. I just I found what I needed, so when you finish, I'll... It says, what time did you get to your hotel? So around 9.40 is what he's saying. So he's saying that he was at the hotel around 9.40, but we have nothing to back that up. Correct. Um, But do we remember... I don't know what time we got to, that he got to the bar. He showed up at 10.15, if not a little after. He showed up right after Robin. Okay. So here's what Robin's saying in her alibi. Quote, I didn't see Charlie much during your reunion. Around 9-ish, I tried looking for him after it ended, but I could not find him. Well, I figured he left right away to go to Dimitri's, or maybe wanted to stop by his house beforehand. I'm not sure. There was some time before we were all supposed to meet, so I went home to rest a little and freshen up. I got to Dimitri's about 10-10. Gavin came in after me and Nita after him. Nick okay. was pretty late, which I found weird, since his parents were hosting the event. But then again, I didn't really think about what everyone else was planning to do. I mean, between the reunion and dinner. I thought I'd see Charlie in an hour or so, you know? Or he wish I could be more help. Yeah. Yeah. So she okay. supposedly went to her house. So that's the thing. We need to figure out where on the map is her house, which I've already got highlighted. So let's go find it really quick. Because she lived on the farm, remember? So I just, in my head, I'm like, that would probably be way too far out. Deerfield Court. No, wrong person. Just, yeah, no, wrong person. Yeah, it is. If I had read the back of this card at the front, it would have actually told us that there are two on this one. But when you have identified the two suspects you would like to eliminate. I've gotten very used to that they usually have three yeah. for the finale. So exactly. So that'll be an interesting final episode. They'll only have to choose between two people. Something tells me that there might not be a clear answer. Yeah. Got um, so we're looking to see... Found Derry Lane. A.V. Coyote. The farm can't be in the middle of So nine-ish, and oh, then... Oh, jeez, O.P., y'all. What? Here, here. That sure makes her out of it. 
Yeah. Um, here, I'll, my my big head was probably blocking that. No, you're fine. So, uh, he died here. Robin lives here, y'all. Yeah, exactly, Salomon. So, yeah, it is really close. Because the thing is, there's no way she could drive by this area and not notice the chaos going on up in here. Yeah. That's shifty. Because Aura found him at, like, what, like, 10-something? Oh no! Wait, she. Found that him begs him. also the question. Then, yeah. how did the? How would your vet person have not noticed either, driving from there to the vet place? Because the vet person left the the school at eight forty. Uh, okay. Charlie wasn't even in that area till after nine o'clock. Oh, that's right. Okay. So that's how she the vet person through. got. Yeah. She would have driven through before. And then she was on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Deerfield Court is down so, here. And Charlie left before nine o'clock, right? Or right at nine o'clock, right? Around there. Yeah. And with she was, somebody. She Robin was looking for him around nine o'clock and couldn't find him. So here's my question. Let me run this by you real quick. So. Gavin's supposed to be hooking up in a janitor's closet, so he didn't leave with Gavin. Antonio's the one that's saying he left someone, so it's not Antonio. Right. Nick said it wasn't him because they were going to meet for drinks. But it's possible so that it was Robin. It either was Robin with... or Nita. Those are right. the only two left, right? So how do we eliminate a suspect, another suspect this round? Can you go back to Nita's... Well, I'm going through these really quick. If Gavin's not in town, Nita's not in town. The hotel would be over here. So Gavin left wherever he was at so say he left at like 9 30 from the school which would be here right i could see him getting here within 10 minutes getting showered right. and then dashing over to here i could see that i could mount okay. he did come in quote, shaking his wet hair like a wet dog says the mom and even arthur made fun of how sophie went ridiculous he looked quote unquote right so okay it's believable what gavin so... is saying at this point is believable but i don't think it's enough to rule him out the question is, we need to look at Nita's information versus Robin's information on their alibis to see which one's more legit. Okay. Are we both so, in agreement? Nick, we already eliminated, right? So we're down to Nita, Robin, and Gavin, right? Right. Oh, this was a curveball I was not expecting. Okay. Uh, did we get witness statements from them on episode one or two? Um, Robin's was definitely episode two, I think. Remember when Nita's was? I'm pretty sure hers was also episode two. Oh, here's Nita's right here, and here's Robin's right here. Jeez, OP. Oh, oh yeah, ridiculous. okay. Yeah. Okay, that was not planned. Seriously, not planned. So, Robin's is pretty much what I already read to you guys. She just was being very ambiguous and very dodgy. Right. Just saying, quote, freshening up a little bit. So my only argument is that she really did go home to freshen up a little bit. She, there's just no way. Okay. What time so, did Aura find him again? Was it? It was nine. Oh no, she found him at ten something, didn't she? Basically, if Robin got ready and drove back through, she would have seen his car. There's no way. Right. If my head is doing the math right, Robin wasn't showing up until ten ten. So at the most she left like ten to fifteen minutes early to get to the freaking thing in time. His body would have already been there. Right. So let me reread the statement from Nita. Okay. The one from today or the one from before? Um, I'm gonna read the first one because is, okay. is that where uh, did we we had the updated one today as well, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So let me actually do that then. Uh, let's go back over here. Let me pull this up. Let me get. I'm gonna read both. Uh, where is Nita's? Okay. <laughs> so Nita said, I got to the reunion when everyone else did, I suppose. This is, I'm, what I'm reading is not going to be on the screen. It's, uh, I'm reading the old one. All right. So I got to the reunion when everyone else did, I suppose. Uh, it was a fun time. Nice to see everyone again. Charlie seemed to be in good spirits. And I remember him saying something about seeing everyone at the Taverna after the reunion was over. I had no reason to believe Charlie wouldn't be there later. Who is your lead suspect? Has the autopsy been conducted yet? Fine, but who in town do you think is qualified to make the public statement? And word travels fast enough around here. It would be more efficient just to tell Pam at the quick easy. Or quickies. Uh, no, I'm not deflecting. I went back to the hotel because I left my wallet and then I went to the dinner. Okay, so Nita is saying that she went... Well, no, but we fixed it, right? So in the next one, so I'll reread that. Um... 
because I left my wallet and then I went to dinner. I'm not sure when I got there, but I know Nick was very late and his parents were waiting for him to show. Have you questioned Mr. and Mrs. Matsukos yet? Honestly, I've never seen an investigation run this way before. You better catch whoever did this. Sarah and Maggie haven't slept a full night since he died. Uh, the updated one is saying we can do this again if we have to. Like I said last time, I went to my hotel to grab my wallet before going to the taverna. Uh, what What do you mean unaccounted? Okay, I went to Sarah and Charlie's house before heading to the dinner. So I know I didn't mention this. It didn't seem relevant. I didn't want you asking Sarah about me when she clearly has bigger things on her plate right now. We're good friends, and the three of us went to college together. I introduced them to each other. Uh, let's see. I wasn't anywhere near the Grove that night. I grabbed my wallet. I dropped by Sarah's. I said hi to her and good night to Maggie, and I went to the dinner. Are we done now? Okay, so uh, maybe I need to see. Off at Sarah's. Remember, Nita said she dropped something off at Sarah's. What would she have dropped off? I think that was the food. Ticket? No, I think oh. the food. That was a delivery um, order, though, wasn't it? Was it a delivery? Yeah, because the, the ticket said, like, if you don't get Do you it delivered within in a here? half hour, yeah. If you don't get it delivered within a half hour, then you uh, get it for free. Hi, Paul. Paul's Pizza and Subs. We don't deliver in 30 minutes or less. Oh, yeah. Delivery right. fee, $2. Yeah. So, okay. So, that was delivered. So, it wasn't then. Okay. The only thing I can think of is maybe she took the bus ticket by. Maybe. So, hi, Barbie. I know you're saying what? eliminate Nita that you said a little bit ago, but is there anything that was that's like standing out as far as why, like what, what specifically that says Nita, you know, is telling the truth and what's cooperating it. Um, let me see about what Sarah's statement was again. Uh, the last time I saw Charlie was a little before six on the night of the reunion and, uh, Maggie had come down with a nasty cold. So I decided to stay home. Okay. Sarah says, Sorry, I was home all night. We only had the one car. Nothing remarkable happened until I got the call from Aura and then the police. I just feel like I'm drifting. Like this is all some horrible dream. Okay. So we don't know. Theoretically, then, if she was going to go to the dinner, did Nita, what time did Nita get there? She showed up after Robin and Gavin. She was last out of the people who showed up. So, and it was after what time? So, Gavin was like 10, 15-ish, so she would have showed up a little later than that. And, and what time was, was what time did far. Aura find I want to say she found him at 1015. Okay. Found him at 1015. So if, I, if I'm wrong on that, anyone correct me. I'm, I'm trying to put out. I'm trying to put the timeline together of here's the timeline when Sarah would have been notified. And we don't have that information. We were never right. That. But so this is what I'm trying to do is kind of like give a rough timeline. though, okay. Right. So Aura found the body at um. Speaking of Aura, uh, Aura Icy, welcome in. Uh, let's see. She found the body at so, 10.15. Okay. So Aura then would have called the police and then after called Sarah because she said Sarah's saying that she got a call from Aura and then the police. So somewhere between 10.15 and 10.30, she would have gotten a call. I doubt it. You doubt it? Yeah. What time do you think she would have gotten the call then? So with how hysterical Aura was in that 911 call, she has no memory of anything except calling 911 and being hysterical until the cops got there. Okay. And usually when cops arrive on scene, it takes them hours to call someone to have them come down and identify a body. They don't ever call you just because someone's wallet says they are so-and-so and call you and tell you. They show up to your house, tell you in person. Right, like, but this really is a weird. small town and the cops... 
may have even recognized because he was the only pharmacist in town. Maybe. It's just normally a cop would not do a notification over the phone. Right. That would not be standard protocol. But that's what Sarah's saying that happened. Right. So... Um, all, all the, the people say so there was a few things that i put in like a to be determined category because we don't know when it happened susan had said heard later in the night what had happened to charlie um someone else said that <laughs> I Dr. Said, Charlie was dead there's um, the, we have an aura aura icy in chat and so oh, aura was saying i found the body i promise i didn't do it <laughs> uh, right so um, there was saying yeah that they that she tried, got the call was willingly taken to the sheriff's department office for further questioning. And it doesn't say a specific time. It just says the body was removed at this time and she went to go get questioning at a different time. Right. So in my head, okay. I assume she had I was just trying to I was just trying to put someone that. together as far as like yeah. Nita's saying she went to see Sarah and Maggie. Yeah. And then left to go to the diner, right? So like if my issue is just the time if was too sketchy. Nita went to see Sarah and Maggie, that would have had to have been, if it's truth would have absolutely had to have been prior to the notification time frame, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that's what I was trying to figure out if that was how we were supposed to eliminate Nita. But at this point, Gavin is the let's, one- I think let's go with who we think is most guilty instead of trying to figure out who to eliminate. Should we look at it from a different point of view? Who do we think are, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just. My brain You're okay. on a different bandwagon. So I mean, we could try, right but I mean, I, we're going to be stuck with two people at the end, which means to me, well, it's I think not we both be agree. Robin's clearly guilty. Like she looks guilty. Like out of all of them, she's the most suspicious right now. So she's obviously not the one we're ruling out. Correct. So we're trying to either rule it in or out, Gavin or Nita. Those well, and, two, right? and as of right now, the only thing we have for either of them is their word. Right, but we also have Arthur saying yes, this closet was messed up. Okay. We also have. Gavin admitting to using Valium. Like, I just, the amount of information he was pouring out, I think he's a moron, especially after all the crap he pulled okay. out in Beverly Hills. I just don't think he's the one that did this. I think Nita is in love with Sarah. She wants Sarah's life. She wants to right. be with Sarah. She wants him out of the way. Robin doesn't like drugs in her town. She knows Charlie is panhandling drugs. I'm almost banking. So right. she's trying to save her town from this quote person destroying her town with drugs one person at a time yeah both those so women I, have very I, I agree motives. i think that we need to eliminate gavin then so what that's my thought right yeah. so because you're right so as of right now we have nothing um that can corroborate nita's story about that she went to see sarah right sarah doesn't mention anything about nita coming over and visiting she, um, she barely gives it up in there i thought uh, in the new one yeah in the new one it's not willingly it's very very stubbornly she very simply owns up to it. Oh, yeah. It says Nita said that. Well, yes, she did stop. She said yeah. it did stop by briefly. Yeah. It's the whole uh, uncovering. You're covering. Oh, you said that. Yeah. And I have to reiterate the same thing. It just sounds like there's a cover up between the two of them going on still, I feel like. Yeah. So, like, yeah. And so this thing, right? So we have Nita who has the motive as far as the fact that um, possibly having an affair with Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, we have Robin who has motive because of ups, being obsessed with Charlie that, you know, and they ended up with someone else, right? Salmon. So, um, and then also um, the fact that Robin hates drugs, right? In her community. And, and not only that, she's trying to eradicate them from her town. Right. Like hardcore. So like, both of those, her. I think, have clear motive. Yeah. Um, and Gavin, both, I feel like... Gavin's uh, just self-absorbed. Like his only thing he cares about yeah. is himself. Like he wanted to lose control so of the hang. Let's, let's go ahead and look at eliminating Gavin. Yeah. Then. I just don't feel like uh, Gavin has anything we'll against Charlie. Yeah. He just feels pitifully sorry for him that he's basically a whipped with yeah. a ball and chain. Let me grab this screen snip of our stuff from eliminating Nick. All right, guys. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like logically it makes the most sense, but I don't know. Lots of confusion. I'm stunned we're eliminating too. I did not see that coming. I didn't really either. did not see that coming. That was a brain bender. Robin jumped to the top of my list with that address. Cookable. All right, so I got that posted in the... Right, yeah, if we get this wrong, absolutely be absolutely surprised. Uh, uh, We've been wrong before, unfortunately. 
weapons. All right, ah. we are correct with Gavin. All right, so I was really, I was really <laughs> Gavin has no clear motive for murder. Yeah, you know, yep. and that's true. Um, he confessed to drugging Charlie, but there is no evidence that suggests that he wanted Charlie dead. Uh, Gavin had access to diazepam and confessed to putting the drug in Charlie's drink on the night he uh, died. So he had the means. Um, and then um, as far as according to Gavin's confession, his movements on the night put him far from the scene of the crime. Further statements from other witnesses corroborate this. Uh, so... Artie's statement described <laughs> Gavin had wet hair when he arrived, like you said, confirming that he had shared after leaving the school. Uh, Ms. This is Masuka's statement confirmed Gavin's arrival at the Taverna around 10.15 p.m. And the interview transcript, Gavin says he was returning to his hotel to shower at the time of Charlie's death. Um, so that eliminates suspect number two this round, uh, which definitely threw me for a loop that we were in. It. That we were, I did mm -hmm. not expect, I didn't even read that card. I did not expect to. We legitimately to... don't read anything prior to this. He has a yeah. very good way of scanning um, stuff in without looking at it. So, so I, yeah, I definitely did not realize we we're going to be limiting too because the past stuff we've done with six episodes has always followed that mm -hmm. that guideline of, you know, you eliminate one suspect through most of. Now I think this is the one we've had with the most actually. This is the only one we've had with nine. Normally it's only six suspects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's also been a little bit different. This um, one's earlier than all the ones we're used to though. That's the problem is they got to the formula they got to by going through this one. True. So that's where I think it's making us drop our bar a bit because we aren't familiar with what they used to do back then. Right. Yeah. All right. There we go. And then I'm gonna put this in Discord too. I've got it marked as spoilers as well in case anybody. Pops into there for that. Doesn't mean to see those. All right. <laughs> they threw a wrench in the wheel and you're here for it. Look at that. All right. So there we go. So there's our two suspects that have been eliminated. Uh, I think that's it. And then what we'll have is uh, for. Uh, I'm very excited to plot all these addresses. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So. That's what we've got. So we're down to two suspects remaining, uh, Robin and Nita. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, it seems like a love interest going on between uh, Nita and Sarah, who is Charlie's wife. Uh, we've got, you know, Robin, who's also got a clear motive as well. So I, I you know, episode six um is is definitely gonna be interesting I'm, I'm curious what evidence we're going to get for episode six oh, yeah. uh what more we're gonna see and I, I mean i'm hoping that we can be able to come to a, like a good clean closed case on it uh without leaving anything up in the air uh and be able to go from there uh so like i said uh you know if you're watching this you know on youtube thank you so much uh you know it really helps us out when you watch it if you can just you know leave it up watch the whole thing fantastic uh if you can't watch the whole thing we understand uh the uh but we're definitely glad these things have been helping you know i've seen gotten comments on uh youtube about different episodes and about different things um actually i i can't remember the person's name and i apologize but uh, we got a comment on one of the episodes of Hunter's Lodge, mm -hmm. and there's, and I will have to pull it up, but check out that video, check out the comments. Uh, there's a, someone posted about, there was actually a episode, a TV episode that was done that had to do with that story. Oh, cool. Um, okay. So, and apparently that is, you can find it on YouTube. So, nifty. Um, so definitely um, I'll, I'll share that in the discord. I'm going to refine that comment. Uh, and then I will make sure I get that shared in the discord in case you're interested in, in watching that uh, and just having a fun little connection to when we did the Hunter's Lodge one. Um, the, uh, we also got Mallory Rock. We got Cora Diary stuff, right? Yeah, so I don't know if anyone else has been on the Hunter Killer site lately, but I happened to get an ad go across my uh, Facebook feed about a prequel, like a little teaser prequel that you can sign up for just by sending your email. It's not going to cost you a thing. 
and it's stuff about Cora Reaver, which is a character from Mallory Rock that if mm-hmm. you haven't seen this series, it's a prequel because it's not going to ruin anything in the long term, but like it gives you a lot of insight into some of the characters that end up playing a huge role within Mallory Rock. And we have some yep. diary journals that we still haven't read yet. I've been saving them to go over with him. I'm like, they sent me six different Cora diaries. Right. Because she was this character so, that you just got teased about, but you didn't get really a lot of info on her. So it was really exciting to kind of get to potentially see some of her backstory. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and we and we'll uh we'll probably get that I think at some point put up in the Discord as well in case yeah. you're interested. In case you were here for the Mallory Rock stuff, if you weren't here for Mallory Rock, well, you know, beauty of YouTube, right? So all those episodes are available in the playlist. Uh, It'll probably show up, I think, on that side of the screen uh, on YouTube. Uh, And then uh, you can be able to click that, go to the playlist, and watch any of our previous episodes of different cases. Uh, Again, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe. You know, again, that helps us out tremendously with everything. Uh, and then our next episode, episode six, the final episode of Class of 98. So excited. Uh, is going to be, as of right now, scheduled for July 7th at, again, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm. Or Eastern Daily Time. I don't remember what time it is. So Eastern Time. All right. Uh, but 5 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time. And I think that that's it. Uh yeah. Until next time. We'll oh, actually, we'll be doing uh, at that one as well. Um, so uh, we are doing a fundraiser in the month of July as yeah. well. So just stay tuned for that as well. Uh, that'll happen during that next episode. We'll kind of have that up as well. Uh, so if you see that on the screen and you're watching it later, then that'll explain why that's up. And we'll explain it during that episode as well. But we're going to be raising some money for an organization called Wolf Park of Indiana. Uh, so that you know we're our, we've got some hefty goals with that and that'll all come out so join the discord again in the description down below uh, links right there in chat and stay tuned for that uh, on how you can help us out with that fundraiser but until next time i mean i think we're good and we are looking forward to being able to solve this case so stay safe stay strange and we will see you july 7th thank you